Okay. I have a few items for you today. Um, the first one I want to visit with you about is the 2016 AIS program. I uh, emailed you the AIS plan that we're operating under now, and um, the end of the year, well, each year we have to um, pass a resolution at the end of the year um, that gets submitted to the DNR because we get this funding, and that, that's very easy to do. So that's coming up. But the, what I want to visit with you about is if there is any changes you want to make to the AIS plan because we will go ahead and adopt it at that time. Uh, just as a reminder, the, the approach we took with this AIS funding was really a, an education approach. This was going to be to educate the general public and, and uh, work with our partners to get people more aware of so that has been the focus of our plan, and that's what we've. Those are the activities that we've been undertaking. We will be looking working on thirty thousand dollars. Last year, we, this year, we worked with what sixty thousand dollars. We got almost sixty thousand dollars. Yes. What was that dollar amount again? One hundred thirty thousand. How much is left from last year? Twenty. About twenty dollars. So we've we've got a nice big pot of money. What a few of the Lake Improvement Districts and the Lake Associations have reached out wanting to partner with us a little bit more. But what they're looking for is they want to be enabled to do more on the ground, preventative, at the lake access Lacey. type of work. Yes, so they want, what I've heard is they want to do a combination of a physical person at the landing passing out information, so kind of furthering that education piece. Yeah but then also doing inspections. And a couple of the lake associations, and I think the Quad Lakes group is, is interested in possibly partnering with Crow Wing County. Crow Wing County has a pretty robust inspection program and brings on a lot of staff. And I think they would like to visit with them about next year, sharing some staff and having some inspection coverage up on their lakes. They want to accomplish that through our AIS money. The AIS funding, we are able to partner with other agencies. You know, we're ultimately responsible for how that money is spent, and it's up to us to ensure that that money is being spent uh, for AIS purposes so we can have a memorandum of understanding, we can have a contract with another agency. But the, so the Lake Associations are looking for an opportunity to tap some of this aquatic invasive species money. And what they really want to be doing is, is more on the ground inspection things. That would trigger a change in our plan if that is something that you want to do. It's not hard to do, but it would be we would need to update the plan and, and um, identify that as, as an activity. And then what I would envision is having a request for proposals or, or opening that up, and, and then we would have those like associations or lids or however they want to partner uh, to present. A, uh, a project for, for funding, and we would do it that way. So that I want to discuss that with you, the, the 2016, because if, if we are going to roll something like that out, we're going to want to do that soon, so then we've got some projects that are ready come spring, so we can be working on that this, this year and into the first part of the next year. So I'd like to, and I, I think some of you have had conversations with some of the lake associations and have heard that same message. So I'd like to discuss that with you today on how, uh, you know, we've got like associations and lids reaching out and wanting to uh, participate in this program a little bit more. I want to get your thoughts on that. What do you think? Amy, if you have, um, if you have two accesses on the lake, for instance, mm -hmm. and you want to hire somebody to be there or police that, can you shut down one access so they have to use it? No, it's a, it's a public access. You can't funnel, you can't direct people to one or the other access. The other thing is a lot of the accesses we have, those are Department of Natural Resources right. accesses. No, so they're not, that. they're not township accesses, they're not county accesses. The DNR does have some inspection activity here and they've ramped that up a little bit because of the zebra mussels and fish trap lake. 
They have a little bit more presence here because this kind of falls a little bit higher on the priority list now because of that. So there is some inspection coverage already happening by the DNR. Not a lot though. And so, uh, but you, you can't, yeah, you can't um, direct people to one or more access good in Good idea. Yeah. 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 Sit there all day, yeah. shut one down, and watch the other one. Yeah. Yeah. You have to also You're right. remember is this is totally, unless it says DNR, it is totally voluntary. Am I correct? What is? Me coming off the lake and Joe Citizen saying, hey, I want to inspect your boat. <coughs> Sorry, Joe, you're not touching my boat. It depends on the level of training that you provide your inspectors. Okay. So there's there's level one and level two training, and okay. with that comes author some authority for for inspection. Okay. So I Granted think by who? The DNR. So because the DNR trains those inspectors, and so then with that comes some authority. So some counties have level two inspectors, and level two inspectors can deny access to the lake. So who enforces that? That would be the DNR. So if you, if we had, so say our unarmed. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got it. So I'm, just, they, I'm they painting a be, picture. Yeah, yeah, so they would be Barney calling. Fight. Yeah, they would be calling either the sheriff's department or a <coughs> conservation officer to. <coughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to create an issue no, I because mm -hmm. the vast majority of the people are going to say, "Yep, yeah, what do you need to do?" And maybe there's a sticker you're going to put on my boat about the cool deal and all that kind of stuff. But you get the obnoxious, you know, not this personal Kevin, the fisherman that didn't have a good day out there today, and doesn't want to talk to you any longer. Where's the authority piece? That's the authority and piece. Fish, and that's it. Okay. Yes. Very good. For fish, yes. Very good. So, uh, <coughs> like I said, that would, would trigger a, trigger a change in our plan. We need to add that activity to our plan if we were going if we intend to fund any activities. Even if the counties are going to be directly involved as far as taking care of the staffing and the scheduling and, and all of that, uh, if, it, if it would be shifting to a, a township function where they would uh, use the money to provide coverage and training and all of that, that can be done. It's just we don't have to plan. And that might make sense if we're going to go to that level to have then manage all of that because it ends up being a lot, I think, to manage all of that stuff on your own. Well, office. and also you're dealing with townships that have some strong opinions, or, or like I said, yeah. have strong opinions on what the coverage should be on their particular lake. Yeah. And when you when you make that a really local decision on how those items are going to be covered. Yes. My, my, the problem I see around, how many lakes do we have of public access? We don't know that at the time. Like head, head. When we 50. look at major lakes, we have a handful of right. them. But I'm not talking major lakes because, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if Kevin will agree with me or disagree with me, is that if we give, because some lid, lids are more uh, active, active, active yeah. that sort mm -hmm. than others are. Mm -hmm. But if we give Lake Chaminade money and we don't give Cedar Lake any money, you know, is it going to be fair? <laughs> What my, what my thought process is, is we would roll this program out for everybody, and it's up to them to apply for the funding. We're not just going to say, everybody here's, here's $25,000 for you to do your program. It would be, no, you come up with a program, you you present it to us, and then and then uh, how much you need, what the budget is, and all of that. That would, So it's an equal opportunity to and, apply and, for the funding. And my perception is different. Okay, and, and what I've encouraged the Quad Lakes to do, okay, is this. I've encouraged them in their Quad Lake meeting between Sullivan, Crookneck, Crookneck Shamana, Alex, Alex and Fishtrap, okay? In that group of people, I've encouraged them to get together and look at and find out what, from their perspective as a group, the best way to utilize any dollars that if we gave them some, they would utilize in a joint venture. My only concern is is that if we have five different lake owners associations, okay, or lids, okay, and we have all these little lakes round, Jerry Januska's lake has an access to it, that they may want money as well. So I encourage them to get together and look at what is the best and most effective <coughs> thing that they could do to utilize the money for. The reason for that is, is if we have five different lake owners associations going five different directions, doing five different things, some of which are going to be ineffective and a lot of this stuff is is ineffective that they're trying now so if they can get organized and come to us with a plan 
I think that's the way to go about this because if we're going to be going every different Friendly all the lakes together. The, yeah, six, the lake owners. So no, I mean I'm talking the quad lakes together and then give them the money we need to even if the other one little lakes like Jerry's. Okay, we'll use that for an example. Okay. Mm -hmm save some money in reserve for those other lakes and to continue to do our education with our water festival out mm -hmm. in Camp Ripley. We need to continue to cover that because that's yeah. where this is going to get what the What I most. envisioned is we would set aside a portion of the money. This is how much money we're going to spend on local lake association projects, period. This is how much money is available right. for that. Right. And then we would have those other pots of money for all of the other efforts yeah. that we yeah. that, that, that we yeah. intend to pursue. So that was that was my thought is just make available a chunk of that money for those to fund those <coughs> types of projects is what I was envisioning. What kind of project do you think all of those lakes would agree on? They well always, see and that's just it. Problems, yeah. Well no and, and, and I hear what you're saying, yeah. Deb, but the bottom line is is if it's doing the people at the access, okay? Let's them work, let them work together on what's going to work for them because get them communicating and that's so important. Okay, so we're not then one lake owner association says, well, you gave fish trap twenty thousand. Well, that's how do how do we how do we start? Yeah, yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we've had several conversations with all the different um, lids and lake <coughs> and stuff in that neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah. And I like Amy's idea of throwing it out to them and having them apply. And I like your idea of um, like joint ventures. You, you could say that if they come to you with a joint venture, it would be looked at more favorably. Priority. And yeah, given more priority. And maybe the fact that even some of these little lakes could get together. And even if they round robin yeah. prevention activities today, the <coughs> prevention officer goes here, or next week they go there, or whatever, if they can come up with some ideas between them, if they get together and work together, I think you might get some better ventures if they start talking to each other. Exactly, and, and my, my problem is with, with not doing that is this. I've been to all four except Sullivan, because it's not my district, and I didn't know when their meeting was or if they have an annual meeting, okay? Because that's all, I think, Mike's district. Mm -hmm. But I was at all, Crooknick, Alex Shaman, Fish I was at all their LID meetings. There are some very strong, opinionated people in each of those groups that think this, <coughs> and if you want to sit through that meeting and see how they start going at each other with how this money should be used, it, it's amazing. There's a lot of polarization going on. One person who, who is on the association here, and there's a lot of division between them. So if we encourage them to bring in a plan that they all work together as a group, that this is what we're going to look at, and then we can approve it. So we're kind of coming at it from something that we're seeing is, is probably the most effective in deciding on that. Otherwise, it's going to go... Yep. And the most vocal and, and influential person in each lid is going to come in what they think is the best thing to do with this money. And then we're going to be <laughs> getting into the middle of all that. Go ahead, Mike. I, I guess my concern is I would think they need to come to us with a plan to get our money. Because mm -hmm. I yeah. think what yeah. we need to protect is we need to protect the people that are using the accesses. Because I can see the lids, some of them, I mean, really, if nobody came on their lake, they'd be happier. So, so I mean, we're yeah. opening up. You know, we, we want we want people to use them. So we got to make sure that. So you don't want a bullying campaign happening. No, that's right. Protect <laughs> <laughs> right. my own interests. Yes. yes. And I think that's yeah. where our money should be given to when we see a plan that protects the people that are yeah. using the lake, and plus yeah. trying to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. That things aren't being brought into the lake, but. I can see I can see your point when you go there and there's people that are very forceful on some things, and like I said, if they could put up a sign saying closed, oh. that, that, that would be the, what they would probably like. So I don't mean to be that sarcastically or anything. Well, it's but very, it's but reality. That's what I, but I think that's what we should be protecting here. Are the people plus the lakes and yeah. that they have access to these yeah. lakes. Yeah. So, yeah. When, so the question that I have is, sounds like you're open to setting aside some money to grant the lake associations and the lids for some projects. What kind of projects are you interested in seeing? Are you interested in seeing just a on the ground, edu more direct education program? Or, do you, or are you okay seeing this move into an inspection program? And that's something I think they need to look at as far together, as far as what can they all agree on, how can we handle this and where those dollars go. I mean, 
there's a lot of stuff out there. I, I can tell you inspections, I'm concerned, okay? It's a lot of money spent. You can't police these things 24-7. I mean, they're, they're, it's a lot of money spent in the short term. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, from my perspective, inspections are a waste of money and yep. a waste of time. They really are from a perspective that there's so many things that you can't, and my, <laughs> my, con my concern is this, there's so many things you can't ex you can't you can't check on a boat. Yeah. I mean, you just can't do it. So I mean, intakes. I mean, there's so. Go ahead. The reason why I want to ask is, I need to change the plan. Yeah. If you're no, going understood. to understand that because right. we we don't have any language about inspections. So do you want to open crack that door in the plan? If it's not in the plan, it they can't pitch right. that idea. Right. So right. Right. that's right. what I. Um, would need to know as far as for us to, to change what we've got laid out for how we're going to spend the money. Otherwise, the way it's written, I think we can partner. I guess I'm kind of ignorant on this with the link oh, stuff, okay. but, I, but I still think that inspections, whether you find everything or not, it still makes me a little more honest that I'm not going to, you know, somebody's going to look at my boat. I think there's a lot of people that don't go out that much that aren't, they're aware of what's happening but they're not even sure what to expect. They, they do a little education. They have one on the <coughs> lake all the time up in the right. where our cabin is. And so we sat there with that same woman who works all summer and she yeah. gives the little same three to five minute. Yeah. And then you want to do this. You want to make sure you look at this. And then you want to be aware of that this happens. And then it, it's like a kind of a canned little speech thing that they give. So it's she kind of walks around and looks a little bit, but she it's more of an educational to tell you what you need to pay attention to. Yeah. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, it isn't obvious. It's feel exactly. good. Yes, it's, 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 it's feel good. It's well, what it's, it's direct education. Water, when you pull, if I was in there and I don't boat that much, and I pull my boat out of the water, I mean, how do I know if I'm finding everything that I'm supposed to be finding? Yeah. And, and you can say education, but that's no different than the fishing holes. you got a book, but if somebody's not there to police it a little bit, People go from lake to lake. I mean, yeah. would it you know, what possible, about fishing nets? Would it be possible to have, put money aside for me, one or two people that can go to all the lakes if they work together? Well, see, and I think that's the, the that's the issue. The, so, if, so, so if we could set side. exactly, so if we could set money aside that gets them to work together on having agree, someone to go yeah. to switch yeah. off yeah. lake to lake yes. to lake. Because exactly, right. and see, that's what yeah. I look because at. Otherwise, if one is more active, than they're going to want more. I think that we're going to do it. I would be for something like that. Exactly. Where yeah. they could go, you train somebody. To or cover different yeah. lakes. Even different the small lakes. lakes if somebody yeah. requests, exactly. you know, so. Well, my question is, is are we targeting just the lakes with lids? No, Randy no. just said no. no. I know what he, what he, he just said. Even the small lakes, he said. Are we targeting, and we are, we are targeting the lakes with lids, and I'm okay with that. Well, not necessarily no. lids, no. but with an organized that, that's what uh, a group. group. Yeah, a group. Yeah. 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 And we need to know uh, who those are. Lake exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 Let's face the yeah. music. We're going to go up to Stansfield today. Yeah. Who are we going to talk to? Every resident on mm -hmm. the lake? <clears throat> I'm, just, I'm just making that as, just as an example. Where, where, <coughs> where do you go with that? Or do you but just... I think, Mr. Zelensky, is that if we do it for every lake, I think those people Hopefully, by word of mouth, they're going to say, "Hey, you know, there's money available here. Do you want us to come to Round Lake?" Or, you know, I'm sure they know people that we can do a press release. Yeah, but I also think isn't that going to turn into Amy having to organize that in her office? Because how do you have all these different well, entities that are only about their lake? But and that's kind of I like Randy's suggestion. I really do, Deb, because he what you said is that we they get together and have someone. Exactly. But when when that money is provided, they need to realize that if there's some issues or concerns on these other little lakes. That person needs to be available to go to those lakes. You see what that would cover any any any. That's not what me as a member of a lid on Shamanas cares about. I mean, you know, you, it's going to be very. I think ideally and theoretically, it's a great idea. But how logistically are you going to have that without a central office administering an inspection program? Because I don't know that. Because there's no. Con, you know, a, a no group that's formed in a certain way that are going to have to have any type of. You know, it's not a new joint powers now that's going to have that money. It's not a new entity. It's a, these individual lake improvement districts and <coughs> kind of work as this our goal and their mission is to worry about in the concerns of their lake. Yeah. So when you give 
a bunch of them money without a new entity form. Who holds it? Who schedules it? How do you? Absolutely. Just I understand those numbers. issues, but our stat, our our stat, our issue is to address all the lakes in the county. So, see, yeah. so that that becomes the issue. You know, we we have to provide it if someone if, if Stanfield Jerry Jerry Janessa comes in here today and says. Boy, I heard there's Kirby Pond we in our, or the DNR finds it in Stanford. You know what I mean? How do we respond to those lakes if you don't have an organization that's. Then you formal eat. it and he has to, you know, do exactly. a lake improvement. Yeah. Oh. I mean, what is the goal? Is it that's, to solve? I mean, sometimes with these grant programs, look at how we have access to grant programs for the state of Minnesota or other counties do. It's those counties that identify their issue, that invest and apply for those funding streams and then do the work as a result of that. I mean, do you, I like I like the idea theoretically, but how do you logistically do it? I this? think an answer to Ian's yeah. question though is do we open up our, our ordinance or whatever you're calling it a, a little bit for inspection? And I would say yes. I would, I would, I would, yeah. I would that's, I, that's what yeah. you asked, wasn't it? Yeah, that, yes, that's what we have to. We have broadened it. I would think that broaden. we need to broaden that yeah. so that we yeah. can look at every option. We need to add option. that activity in the plan before we could spend money on those right, activities. Right, because that way it's at least an option. We're not we saying can... what the activity is. We're right. Right. Not just okay. inspection, but... I can make some general language that... That covers that other, exactly other options some presented. Of yes, because right now we just don't have it. And yeah. so that's our first step is getting it in the plan and then rolling some sort of yeah. program out yeah. To, to make that money available. And, and Deb said it a good way where you don't have to like encourage teamwork and encourage maybe more regionalization yeah. Yeah. of things, but don't necessarily <coughs> limit that because you may have very different goals for you know Alexander and and Sullivan in one area yeah. versus Platt and, or you know what I meant, Alexander and Shamrock and versus Platt and yeah. Sullivan. In a different, I mean, encourage more. That maybe makes sense between yeah. Platt and Sullivan because they're right there. Yeah. But it may not make sense for the same inspector on the same, you know, to be directed by both. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I, 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 I don't look for it too, but I just, yeah, it's going to be a hard one to. Yeah. But I think, I think you're, we really need to define yeah. sooner than later how much money. Mm -hmm. We're going to make available, keeping everything else to address. And even if there's a smaller lake, that money, they're going to need dollars at some point if they do organize. And I think you so look at it on an set. annual basis. You look at it and say, how much money do we have? And that's the icky part of being a grantor, because you have to make those decisions. Look at NGAPA, who gets all of these requests, but only has so much money that, can, that you can give. That every year you look at what's here and where do you guys prioritize this, what plan is good, what makes sense, what are we going to fund this year, what did we fund last year, I mean it gives you that ability, you're never going to be all to everybody because giving everybody $200 probably won't be that effective, but giving one a bigger sum of money. And Mr. Chair, sense. I mean, so as far as like <laughs> advertising this to make it available for everybody to come, would we'll you just put in a record or is there something? You would, that's what I You would have to, yeah. Well, was doing <laughs> press release, we're now accepting applications for this, these are <laughs> Just kind of a they can make a headline in the record so they can put down. Yeah. But just for the Not sake of argument, if you don't have an organized group on a lake, are you really expecting e it to get some heat from that lake? I doubt it. I, yeah. I wouldn't expect it. If wouldn't they're not expect organized it. in any other way, I don't for, know that we would. Yeah, for instance, like out in my area, Cedar and Pine, I don't know if they have owners no. uh, of no, Lake yeah. Shore. I don't think they do. Yeah. But so, again, you never know if they maybe they see it. Going. You know what? Let's put something together. Yeah, so, get you know, a couple lakes to do yeah. it together it would be good. Well, so but then what you're saying is at that point, yep, let's form a a lid. Well, that all takes a little bit of time. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's not done overnight. Yes. Yep. So that would be for it the perhaps the yep. following. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But right. but it don't have to be lids now, right? No. no. Right. No. But no. An organized yeah. organized yeah. group. Yeah. yeah. Lake right. association. Uh, lake association or a lid. We yeah. mean yeah. they be apt yeah. to get some money first. And then let's say that right. year, if uh, Round Lake has a lake association, I think most of them do. Or <laughs> whatever. Yeah. If they'd come to us or to whomever and they want some money for a study or whatever, would they be eliminated just because they don't have a lid? I think we would be looking at the quality of the plan. Yeah, the project. Or yeah. what they're laying out. If it's a well yep. thought out plan yeah. that right. makes sense, that would be worth investing in. I think yeah. I don't yeah. think yeah. that that would yeah. bar them from giving. Yeah. I just want them to have the opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. I would hope that I would hope that no matter how many links we're talking, that 
that they all come up with some yep. general plan that's pretty close to the same. So that yes. so that me as a voter are going to lakes that I don't that there's not a totally different plan on yes. every lake. Right. I yeah. can see where the yeah. first eight things are the same. Then down here on this lake has this too because of whatever these reasons may be. But um, I think that we should look at plans and see which ones that we can get behind. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to amend our AIS plan to, to open that door and that and then we'll get that adopted and then we can work on developing uh, the program for that. The other thing I wanted to visit with you about AIS is do you want to set aside any of the money for uh, for entities to tap for a rapid response program. So for example, say something is detected in a lake and treatment right now would be effective. Do you want to set aside any money for those purposes? <coughs> Some counties do, so that's why I just wanted to ask. Like if there's a blog or something? Or? No, that's not an aquatic invasive species. So for example, there is a, for example, zebra mussels, if you find a few in the area, you can treat for those. When it's widespread, it's it's not. Too late. But it's my too question late. is, yeah, by the time so you find them, it's too late yeah. anyway, isn't it? Yeah. It, it might prolong the agony. It's kind of like uh, what's that? True. Does it feel good again? Is what yeah. It yeah. Is. I think it is. Uh, just a question because some counties do have it, and it's yeah. just a, some money set aside for. I don't think quick, we have enough money. Response. We're not talking no. about enough money. Yeah, I don't think so. Right. All right. right. Then, <laughs> okay. I'm not 100 percent sure that I agree with them on that. I think I think it's nice to have a little pot for things that may come up that we don't know what's coming up that we maybe could do something with, you know. And I don't know what that is because it's not here today. But I do have a problem with even like a fish trap with the zebra mussels. There were none there, and then when they find them, they're all over. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just that concept doesn't make sense to me. I can see finding some guy. Someplace, <laughs> you know what I mean. But then, when all of a sudden they find some, and now it's all over the place, then why didn't they find it earlier? But when we're looking at the the whole cost of the grant, or the whole total of the grant, rather, mm -hmm. what portion, what's a little bit aside, mm -hmm. is a yeah. hundred bucks aside? I know that sounds kind of crazy. Or twenty yeah. grand. Or twenty I'm grand. grand. I'm thinking yeah. like twenty grand or something. Okay. Yeah. So that if something came up that doesn't exist today, you that, help that, out that you could help out with something. Like yeah, but I don't know. Mike, those going? villages are smaller than the tip of that pen. Okay, zebra okay, zebra mussels. You know, the just just a little ones. Okay, so for them to expand very quickly is not is it, they just do what can. So, I mean, once someone found them, that's how. I mean, but that's yeah, that example in, in respect. Yeah, that's that example. Exactly. You're saying something it else. Could be curly. Could be anything. You know, yeah, I think yeah, I'm, small I'm thinking of things that we don't know yeah. about yeah. that yeah. they have nowhere to go. Except I know the DNR should have money for some of that stuff. But you know? but it doesn't well, hurt yeah. to have a reserve for something that we're not even thinking of today. But that'd be next year because we'll get money hopefully next year. Uh, whatever. I, I I think I agree with Mr. Linsky. I think. Expand expand the plan this year to include some inspection activities right. and, and yeah. let's see what they do. Yeah, right. Maybe next year we'll change it a little bit. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I would even use inspection. I would I mean to open up for different alternatives to address yeah. You know, no, I, I, I hate to I, I make it very broad. I want to make sure I, it's yeah. broad enough, though, so that it, it's flexible enough. Because since we yeah, know, exactly. Like yeah, if you say inspections, there's yeah. people out there who think inspections are the answer, and we really need to. I'll come up with something. The county attorney, he can put something on. <laughs> 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 you guys, who has plans? It could be different than what they submit right, in terms right, of right, what right. you guys think is. Let's go to the expert for investment plans. We can thresh over. So I will I will amend this to open the door. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Anything else you want to talk about on AIS? Okay. I'm wondering. No. No. Great time. No. No. Uh, the next item I want to visit with you about is the Agram Township Septic Inspection Program. If you recall, I had some discussion with you. Oh gosh, over the summer, in regards to a. Uh, township-wide septic system inspection program and we were going to be working with Helen on some uh, applying for some grant money through the Clean Water Legacy funds to do that program. So 
met with the township and with the Pierce Fish Lake Association because that would be the lake that's affected. And I got letters of support from both groups uh, regarding that. So we did move forward in preparing some grant funding. What we discovered is that we have some uh, leftover grant money from the fish trap project enough to do the Agram Township project. So we really? have, wow, so Great. it was good news, so we have enough money without having to apply for more, and we did get uh, the Bowser okay to use that money for this project. So we are ready to go, we're funded. And so uh, I did send a letter to the Agram Town Board and to the Lake Association, letting them know that yes, this is going to move forward. And so the next step is we're going to, probably within the next couple of weeks, we're going to send a letter out to every property owner in that township, much like we did with the fish trap, just saying, okay, this is happening. This is, is what we're doing. Riparian owners? No. Or everybody in the whole 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 township. Because we've got a nitrate issue there. Yeah, so the we're doing a township wide can just the inspection. Test. They're going to come to the office too. So we're doing a township wide <laughs> program. And to give an idea of the scale, the number of property owners in Agram Township is much smaller than the fish trap. So this is a much yeah. smaller project. The fish the ones on the lake of fish trap. There's a fish trap one can get them since they already got them. Yeah. Yes, fish trap is done. And let's just right. make sure our terminology here appears as fish lake. Here's fish lake. Fish lake. Yes. And the other one was fish, fish, fish trap. trap. Fish fish trap. Fish 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 <laughs> that will not yes. Yes. Does, 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 does Piers, Piers fish lake have a, have a, uh, lid? Uh, no, they no. Like I know they have a lake or but not a lid. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, we're going, so, yeah. I think what helped with the fish trap lake project was Plenty of information saying this is coming, this is what this is about. So nothing was ever a surprise. So we're going to get that letter out saying we are going to be doing this. We're going to be evaluating properties. You'll hear from us again if your property meets the criteria for inspection. Okay. Mandatory volunteer. Mandatory. Oh, mandatory. Yes. So we have we have ordinance a language that uh, enables us to do the inspection. Can you look at everybody who doesn't have a certificate? Correct. So we'll be looking at anyone that meets the threshold that does not have a current certificate of compliance on file is who will get flagged for inspection. So we're going to do that that blitz to all property owners, and then we will do once those properties are identified that need inspection, a second letter will go out to them with more information, more details, of what to expect. Then we also uh, are going to do we'll. We'll do like a, a town hall meeting mm -hmm. at Agram Township. We did that up at Fish Trap Lake, and that was very well received because it gave them that one-on-one -on -one time with us to ask specific questions about their property and how that would work and all of that. So we plan to have that physical interface <coughs> with those people at a, at a meeting, and we'll work with the township on setting that date. And then we'll send out the RFP for the septic inspector and will so that will be a 2016 inspection project is what it will be so we'll be working on that this winter and, and we'll be inspecting this spring. okay so the rfp has to go out okay the rfp will go out in that same person January -ish. Okay. yeah we'll send it out yeah. do you put in there of course mr chair I mean, you put in there like the nitrates comparable because i know abram is way off the charts so people can see as part hey, of our education piece when we mail it out to tell them why we're right. doing this we will be touching on the nitrate level as far as what a safe uh, drinking water yeah. standard is yeah. and the average But can, uh, can we put the other townships in? To me, that was just like, you know, you look at Bellevue or Little Falls and you look at Abram, it's like, oh. You know, are you, are, you mean a comparable, like, so the, people um, can see why. Would Abram Township have these nitrates compared to other places? Over townships right, I just think we'll it, right around them. Depending yeah. on the data that we have, yeah. I can get that. Or something close. Yeah, the Department of Agriculture, I think, uh, 
uh, did further testing on, I want to say, six townships. So we have a nice body of data for that. So we certainly can demonstrate how much of a hot spot agar township is. Exactly. And that's what I'd like. I don't know about you. It's your yeah. township. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just going to say, you know, this is not a surprise to people nope. because, yeah. because the uh, Lakes Association asked the people that they wanted yeah. to do it. Yeah. The town board, we asked them, and they both took it to their meetings. They agreed. So they know it's coming. They, they understand. And what the concern is, and it was not news to them that <laughs> there's a high but It's just amazing. I mean, yeah. it's like the townships around because you sent some data yeah. how off the charts they are compared to the next townships. So it's like, is there a volcano underneath <coughs> or something? Exactly. Well, and the real reason it may have been there for years, right. and it has nothing to do with anybody. No, right. But as long as the money is available, it's a good time to do it because yeah. whenever we do any statistics Agram Township is going to come up across the state so we might as well figure out try to figure out if we find out at all where it's coming from or what's and, happening. And it might not help today but 10 years from down the road then Well and the, and the intention is to supplement the Department of Ag information with this septic piece uh, because then because right now what they're asking when they're sending out those test kits is they're asking what the proximity of their septic system is to their well. Well, then if we can fill in with with okay, and then oh, and by the way, this passes or no, it failed. That can that will supplement the Department of Ag's study into what's going on. So we will be moving forward with so that program. Mr. Andy, am I, Commissioner Jelinski, am I putting you on the spot if I say what what is we would all like to be zero? Mm -hmm. I got that. It is is safe? Five parts, in, and I hope I'm saying this right, parts per million? Ten parts per million and under is considered safe okay. for nitrate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ten and they parts. do have an osmosis of these networks. Reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis. Yes. Whatever, Whatever that means. And a lot of people. <laughs> <very true. laughs> Whatever that means. Using reverse os they have a reverse yeah. osmosis system. Which stomach. cleans the water up. And yes, and it removes the nitrates out of it. So uh, there's many people in Agar Township that already yeah. have that. Sure. But again, anything under 10 parts per million is, is safe. According, according, according to, according to, according to, to deemed safe, safe to drink. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it meets the Department of Health standards. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, don't, I don't think this project is going to be one thing that's wrong that's making our nitrate so hot. I mean, I think it's got to be something somewhere else that's it's just a bad area or whatever. I hope you're I don't, right. I don't see a septic system in general changing that whole area. It's too big an area. It right? might influence one well. Yeah. And it might contribute to Some. a more elevated nitrate. Yeah, right. But yes, it's. I, I agree. I don't think it's going to explain why we have That's this uptick in nitrates in that. But it's a good place to start yeah. because it's a very high rate. It's, right. it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a process of elimination. That's right. Yes. 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 No, Amy, that being said, let me let me kind of put a plug in here yeah. for Lake Alexander. Okay. Yes. And I know they have requested yes. this, okay? And and would that mean because we still have the funding left from the user, okay, one more. to be able to fund this project, that we could apply for a grant for Alec quicker than what we did? They would not. When we had discussion with Lake, Lake Alexander, yeah. we had had this Agrum Township project in the hopper. And oh, no, understood. Said, understood. And we had said, if we get support, this is this is going to be a priority over, yeah. over yours. One thing that we heard, though, from Bowser uh -huh. is because lake inventories, lake septic inventories, are becoming such a mainstay, they're not likely to be funded anymore because... Um, the Agron Township one was a little bit different because we had this public health yes, yes, caveat yes, 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 to it. Yes, yes. But one thing that we were told in the meeting with Bowser when we were preparing to apply for the Agron money was that it's unlikely that just a straightforward septic inventory is going to be funded anymore. You've got to make it, you've, to, you've got to pull something else in. You have to have some twist to it because these are. Um, these are becoming kind of a, a mainstream thing that most counties are doing, and so they're not looking to, to fund just a straightforward inventory anymore. So I think we'd have to be working with that township on some other angle uh, to get that f funded for if we want to do any more of these without, um, if we want to do them with grant money, we're going to have to 
come up with a different <coughs> angle on future projects. So, and that was just because the fish trap one was funded because that was our very first project mm -hmm. and we had new language so it was really to jump start us implementing that but yeah so that that's kind of the feeling from bowser is that we probably won't be successful i can do some asking too. yeah so that's what we were told so we'll have to get creative if we want to tap the clean water legacy funds for that I'll, I'll do some, some questions and ask them because Alex, they had a, the, the water flow that goes into Fish Tramp and then into Long Prairie River. So we've got some, there's some other issues that might yeah. incur that. So that's what we <coughs> need is we okay. need some other connecting reason to. Yes, that would make that more priority, priority yes. or to stand yeah. out or something different than just a straightforward septic inventory. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. yeah. Anything else on the Agram Township project? Okay. I will keep you apprised as we go along. Um, <coughs> what I intend to do is I will send you a copy of each letter that is sent so you know what information went out. Okay. And so that way if you get called, you will at least know what was said So uh, when you deal with that. Okay. Uh, the last thing I have for you today is I did receive a citizen request for an ordinance amendment. I'll give you some background on that. Um, right now in our ordinance, we do have a process in place uh, addressing conditional use permits. As you know, we grant a lot of conditional use permits, and then now we also have the interim use permits, which is a permit that runs with the land. Interim use permits, we do identify an end date, but, but other than that, they function very similar to a conditional use permit. And as long as you're um, abiding by your conditional use permit, you have that land right. Right now, also in the ordinance, we do have a process. So if we do have a conditional use permit violation, there is a process laid out in the ordinance that, and in, in, in all, and I'll say in all violations, the goal is compliance. So in, we carry that through in the conditional use permit violation process where we first deal with it administratively so we are notifying the applicant that there is a violation and we give them a time frame to correct <coughs> whatever it is and that and that can range because we have so many different conditional use permits we have so many different conditions so we we can be talking about very minor very minor infractions or egregious ones they can run the full gamut so the, the first step is administratively, and that is my office, working with the condition use permit holder, giving them a time frame to come into compliance. If they do, they do, and, and we move on, and their condition use permit stays in force. Sure. If we have repeated violations or very egregious violations, ones that we in the office cannot get corrected, then we have an elevated uh, enforcement regime in the in the ordinance and that is bringing that applicant in front of the board you and then you have a whole buffet of choices and options to deal with this violation and it includes you can levy a fine you can open up their conditional use permit and modify their conditions and then it can be all the way up to revocation and that is and that is up to you that is a public forum where the conditional use permit holder answers to the claims. You know, they answer to what is what is uh, going on. Yes. In front of the county board. In front of the county board. Yes. And the board, if I just want to know that I understood what you said. Yes. And the board in this type of event mm -hmm. is the decision maker. Correct. You as you granted the conditional use permit. Yeah. Well, yes, you have the power. You have the power then to either revoke. I don't have the power to revoke. Yep. You have the power to revoke. Very good. It. And so that is the process that we have laid out. In in the time that I've been here, we have not had very many conditional use permit violations. And the ones that we have had, we've been able to deal with administratively. Um, and and they don't come before you. It's it's very rare that we have something come before you. Mm -hmm. So the so. That's the current process. The request I have and the concern that I and that's been brought to me is that that is too subjective of a process. 
that um, it leaves too much decision making in the planning and zoning office's hands and in your hands. And so the, the request is that we consider language in the ordinance that would really have a very, a lot more cut and dry. You violate your CUP, it's revoked. Now I do have some concerns about that because by law, we, we have to provide some due process and people an opportunity to answer to those claims. Um, I did ask other surrounding counties, or all, actually all of the counties, if they have a process similar to that in their ordinance. And they all have a process laid out in their <coughs> ordinance for a revocation, but it always includes either a public hearing or some appearance before the board where that decision is made. So what we have in our ordinance is very similar and consistent with what we have statewide and what's allowed. Um, I think I'll let Brian comment because I did discuss this with him because we, we, ups, we obviously have to make sure that any ordinance change would, would be within the law and would violate people's rights. A conditional use permit is, is a property right that runs with the land and when you sell the land, the person who purchases the land can use that conditional use permit. They're purchasing that as well. And so because it's a property right, uh, the law does require procedural due process. At, at, at its very core, that means a notice and an opportunity to <coughs> be heard, uh, a hearing in front of the county board, and that's what our current ordinance provides for. And then you're the deciders, you decide what the appropriate remedy is. And that makes a lot of sense because as Amy noted, you were the body that issued the permit. Maybe not you individually, but some former body. So I'm comfortable that where our current ordinance is written, I think it's, it's legal, and it certainly sounds like other counties throughout the state follow the same process. My concern about some type of automatic revocation provisions is that it does not uh, take into consideration uh, the seriousness of the violation, whether it's some technical or, or minor uh, violation of the permit that could easily be remedied. So my concern is something like that would look very arbitrary and capricious. I'm not sure why you would want to give away your ability to make uh, the, the decisions in individual cases. That brings up a question for me, Brian. So if I buy, let's take my 80 acres out by Cushing. Okay, if I want to clear cut my 80 acres, I can do that, correct? Okay, I'm going to take all the trees off of it today. It's you know, property, why can't you? That's right, if I want to farm it, okay? When I buy that land, it gives me the ability to do what I want with that land. Am I correct? I mean, if it doesn't infringe upon, if I have a house in Little Falls or wherever, okay, and I buy that house and the property I own, okay, and what I do inside that house is my business, correct? Yes. So this is basically the same issue. It's a right that is with the property that we give when we grant a conditional use permit. So in giving that, they have to comply with certain issues to obtain the permit, correct? The burden is on them to prove they're worthy of the permit. Exactly. So when they do that, they go before the planning commission and then come before this board and we approve it, okay? We're giving them something that they have rights to, all right? Right? So to revoke that should require as much of a process from my perspective as it did to obtain it. And that's essentially what the law requires. And that's that's what I'm thinking. So to, to, to shorten that up on the end where the person who gets it doesn't have the rights to question when, if we were to decide <coughs> that something was not okay, would take away their rights. And Mr. Chair, if I may, I think what the, this is where the person is, wants to, this is no exceptions. This, and we all make mistakes, you know. So I, I'm gonna, maybe this is a dumb comparison. I have a driver's license, which is a privilege. Mm -hmm. I'm speeding, I get a ticket. Do they take my license away? No, that's part of the process. That hey, you get another one, now we're gonna do some challenges. In this well, here case- you're going 150 miles well, an hour, but, right, take so your license, but, but again, you still can get it is, there, again, once, like, like Debs, or uh, Amy said that there was very few uh, people that were <coughs> in violation of these ordinances. And yeah, they're out there, they make mistakes. I, I, I disagree. Little Harley with the person. I think I agree with uh, our attorney that yeah, let the process do. Yeah. If they're totally violation, then let's uh, pursue it. But at this time, no. 
Commissioner Johnson? First of all, if I understood anything, Brian, that you just said, it's the law. Is it not? You just said it's the law. Due process. They're, they're required to receive due procedural due process. No question. Under yeah. the law. Yes. End of discussion. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, <coughs> yeah we so, got to be by the within the law, you know. We can't. So we just can't invent laws like that. I, no. At least I don't think we can. Because then they would be applied by well, whoever has a different different opinion. Then, Mr. Wilson. Maybe I think some of the clarification <coughs> maybe would be how many times do you allow somebody to be out of compliance to get back into compliance? I've heard a few times, I don't care if it's livestock, wherever it's at, well, every year I have to call and because this guy's not doing it right, you give him a letter, he gets back in compliance. I mean, I do feel there should be a time when, you know what, I know what my rules are that I have with this property. How many times do I get warned before I have to come to this board to possibly get taken away? We don't have, that's not laid out. That's not laid out in the ordinance as far as how many brushes you would have with our office before we bring you in front of the board. That is, and that is where we have the ability to, is this a minor issue? Is this a major issue? Is this a repeated issue? Is this, and so that, that and I think that was the concern is that there is, not there is not language in the ordinance that uh, at some point just requires that that come before the board. Okay. And, it, and it also gets just for clarification for myself yes. in some of our livestock areas, yes. when you're at a tier two or a tier three, a lot of that's taken out of our hands too, correct? Because once you get to a tier <laughs> when you get into a tier four, four. Um, then you're under <laughs> MPCA regulation. And so we don't, we still will, we still will grant the conditional use permit. They still have to go through that process. And we may have conditions on them. But above all, the MPCA, that it, it's an MPCA controlled site at that point. So we do have some feedlots that are really not under our jurisdiction anymore. Right. Yeah. Again, I kind of look at it with the agriculture end of it. Farmers sometimes when they pile them on there, mm -hmm. okay, they're out of violation. But why am I doing it? Because I can't get it in the field, because it's raining or wet. There's always some exceptions that you kind of give people a break once in a while just for those reasons, you know. So just to say absolutely because you're out of violation, you no longer can have your CUP for this manure barn or whatever it may be. It just doesn't make sense to me. Because we're trying to work with people. Exactly. We want business yep. in our communities and we want to correct issues, not deter things. Yes, yes and, and, and he doesn't do this all by yourself sitting in your office with a closed right. door in terms right. of that subjectivity. So she consults her staff who's educated in how things need to work. Brian's there for assistance. We talk often with, you know, we've got an issue. She brings in the commissioner of the district often in terms of, you know, here's how I'm handling this, what do you think, and where are we going? So I, I, I think there's a lot of consultation, there's a lot of thought process, there's a lot of, um, well, I don't know, discussion that happens about where are we at, what's happened in the past, what do we need to do moving forward, how should we handle this issue. It's not done by just one person who decides on a whim what's, what to do moving forward. So I, I think we need to recognize that. Well, and I think Amy said, too, you call all the counties around here to see how they address and handle yeah. this, too. Yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, there's a lot of that. It's not just we're not this island. So. Well, and yeah, we're not by ourselves. The point, uh, Mr. Chair, is that I had one here not too long ago where there were not <coughs> compliance, and I was contacted to go and visit with the, uh, the person, in the, you know, so it's just not you yeah. making that decision. No. Right, you know, right. So, absolutely. And I, I want to go back to Commissioner Lincher's example. He gets a speeding ticket today. State patrol in the county, the city, is not taking his driver's license away. He gets five speeding tickets in October. I'm thinking he's probably got a problem. And then there, there's a course. There, there, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go with it? And that's what you're talking about. That's what we are, it, yep. as far as I'm concerned. I well, think to add on to that, sometimes we get warnings too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything's a little bit different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it sounds like Amy, you don't have to spend more time doing 
contract link or a women's language. Not as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Mr. President. Mr. Chair. Or Mr. Chair. Yes. May I make a comment? I don't know that we take public comments at this time, Robin. Well, I'm the one that brought forth the concern, and I'd like to just take a minute of your time to read something important to you. It's from your own comprehensive water plan. Our own comprehensive what? Water plan. And on page 12 it reads... The manure management and whether there are adequate acres for application has risen as a concern amongst elected officials and resources. Whether the gro growth is having an impact on groundwater is not known. Also on page 14 it reads, the teeth in the open lot agreement program has been minimized by the lack of a concrete plan regarding what happens to those that have not addressed compliance issues. And my concern is that subjectivity and it leads to selective enforcement of laws, and that's a concern, and that generally leads to lawsuits. And I would strongly request and suggest that uh, you consider um, putting some type of plan in force that says you can repeat a violation maybe once, twice, three strikes, whatever, and you're out. With total subjectivity to any law, that is a real problem. And that's why I brought this issue forward. Okay, thank you, Robin, for your yep. input. Next gentleman. Amy. That's all I have, unless you've got questions for me. For the questions, gentlemen? <coughs> oh, just a quick update. We did get, um, we did close the Board of Adjustment and Planning Commission openings, and we'll be filling those. Oh, excellent. Oh, good. We have there is no planning commission, correct? Right? No. No. Always capital. Planning Commissioner's plan. Yeah, no planning commission. Because there are no there are no, no agenda items. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No. And Amy, oh. we're meeting at one. Right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank let's you. Let's take let's Thank take five. ten minutes, John. Hi, Brian. Good morning, Brian. I am. Rashawn. How long is it going to do? Be, do you think? You know, yeah. you're saying I have to do sheriff sales at 10 o'clock. Sheriff sales? Yeah. Anything good for sale today? I don't know. <laughs> Three of them. So, I don't know. I don't know how long it'll be. I'm guessing it should be. Sure. So, glad you can join us. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Brian. Six. We were down at Brainerd at the fireworks, 
and we had parked down in the bowl by the by the uh, football field. And of course, fireworks are about over. She goes, I gotta go to the bathroom. She really had to go. And I said, we're not getting out of here for a long time so I can walk you right down close to the river and we can go and go, no, no. And by God, she held it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's all. But I'll tell you what, there's sometimes when it just, oh, you just got to stop. I, I, just, I, just, I just, you know, look for the nearest cornfield or something. Yep. Kind of thing. I'll tell you what, my wife is terrible. She's got to know what she's got and they can't figure it out, but she can eat something and you never know what in a matter of, a matter of one minute, two minutes. Well, it's right it's got to go now. They just know. And you can't define which food it is or what it is see, because it just... I'm the same way that it's not a very good subject, but you know, you're, uh, you're, you know, I'm, okay, it's okay. I can make it to the next, I can't freaking make it to the next gas station. This is like, what the That's when the officer's like, standing out there, yeah. indecent yeah. exposure. <laughs> I don't know if they would give him a break for that or not. So I'll well, I suppose it depends on if you can walk straight after he has <laughs> 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 I've been ruined see. a few times, yeah. and yes, I get breaks. Yeah, that, that probably it was unintentional. <laughs> you try to open the door up, you need to scream, you know, yeah. try to get down, and get out of it. Stay in the middle of the street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, oh, yeah, you're standing on the street. Yeah. Yeah. It was unintentional. It was unintentional, yes. The guy going, you got that kind of gall when you were unintentional. I think I was. At least it's a good idea to turn it down. So are yeah, you a hunter, Jim? Yeah, with a camera. With a camera, okay. Because you've been duck hunting and you saw you over a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so I've been running really both of you this weekend. I got a lot of friends that are open. Well, you were really popping around. Uh, yeah. I'm shooting quite a bit here in the open day. I don't know, we have to hunt. I've got a couple of brother in laws that keep, uh, keep us well stocked. They're coming. I and my brother are you doing the presentation for the brother first brother went and caught some crappies. Are you doing the presentation for my wife? No, just no, 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 I'm just sitting in on the meeting. I understand. Yeah. 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 And then he had them all laid out and everything. They were gone and all. They needed to go whatever. Yeah, he used to be a crappie. You could be here for 20 years. But nothing better than right out of the lake. Exactly. It's really this next reason that he's here. Yep, yep. He's taking it out. Yep, there you go. Oh, I never knew how to catch crappies. Sunfish, but I never caught them. I don't catch them ever funny. There's no crappies doing it. Doing if I throw it out, see yeah. what I pull up? Crappies. I don't know what he's at. Sometimes it's a turtle. Brian yeah. Allen was in and from yeah, yeah. the bar. Morning, Brad. Good morning. This deal next August, I guess. Yeah, the Commissioner, Commissioner Johnson gets it. Oh, that's cool. He'll bring that. He just, yeah. He wants some help. Uh, uh, some help. His groundwater priority concern. For him, yeah, I like it. I like it. He's a good guy. He is a good guy. Yeah, yeah. States. Nitrate, priority concern, nitrate contamination from over application of animal waste in confined ag facilities could potentially become a drinking water hazard. Morrison County, Morrison Public Health and City of Bluefields. That's my reason for concern. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Mm -hmm. All right. You got everybody? Go oh, ahead and again. He's going to say the important ones, but no He's one No, we're not going to say that. As soon as he sits down, I'm going to go we were discussing the bathroom race. We've got to go with that. I'll get back to the bathroom race. Okay. Let's get back right before he's going to go. Yeah. Brad. Good morning. Good morning. Actually, I did invite Brian and Sean, and Sean has a representative here for his office. So. Okay. Um, and I just thought I'd do a little bit of an update on Sean's representative. Come on. If you want to, I don't care. Come on. Oh, sure. All right. So. And Brian can have to take his formal seat, so. Um, but I just wanted to update the board a little bit on the activities around the child protection system. Um, as you know, the governor's task force met for a period of time last year, completed their work, presented final recommendations. 
some of those recommendations were presented to the board or presented and approved at the legislative session. As a result of those recommendations, we did hire two additional staff. Um, and that was an allocation that the Department of Human Services got from the legislature. So, um, but there's continuing to be a lot of activity that's happening around child protection. And so I'm just going to do some brief updates. Please interrupt me if uh, you have any questions, but I'm just going to kind of ramble on for a while and hopefully there'll be some focus at the end. So, um, so after the uh, first governor's task force ended, um, the Department of Human Services and our directors group uh, developed a, a strategy work group to really prioritize and put these <coughs> recommendations into some perspective. Because I think that from the legislative standpoint, they all felt that these were important recommendations and they all had varying risks, costs, um, implications to the system, both within our system, to law enforcement, to county attorneys, to courts. And so we developed a strategy work group really to, uh, to uh, piece together all these recommendations and we put together uh, a strategy work group paper which identifies kind of the low, medium, high risk to all those recommendations. Um, then after that strategy work group was almost completed with their work, the department has put together uh, four other work groups. The Foster department meaning the Department of Human Services. Services the foster care work group, an intake and screening work group, um, a child mortality review uh, work group, and then an uh, implementation work group. We've actually had representation on three of those four work groups. The foster care work group, Melanie Erickson has been a member appointed by our directors group. Jeff Guth was actually a member on the intake and screening work group. Um, and I believe they're pretty much done with their work. Um, and then I have been appointed to the implementation work group through the directors. And really that group is going to oversee all of the work groups, all of the recommendations, the implementation of the recommendations, um, the cost associated with implementing those recommendations. Um, Who's going to do the cost? This implementation work group will evaluate cost to implementing any of those recommendations that they're considering. So for instance, the Department of Human Services is really interested in um, ensuring that there is 24-7 coverage in the child protection system. I believe it was in 2008 or 9, up until that point, we actually had social workers on call that the Sheriff's Department could beat, would take the call, would assist law enforcement. Um, when the state began to uh, cut social services, uh, the county made a decision to discontinue that expense because we did pay social workers per, uh, per hour for carrying those pagers and then the costs associated with uh, doing the on-call. Now the Sheriff's Department and law enforcement agencies really manage that system um, and if there is anything they need assistance with it's the supervisors and directors that they call. Um, and I think it's worked pretty well for the most part. There's always a hiccup in the system but I've not heard of any issues or concerns around the child protection area um, since I've been here. There's areas and other, there's issues in other areas unrelated to child protection, but we won't get into that today. Is that okay? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so if the state is interested in implementing a 24-7 child welfare system, that has serious ramifications, especially around cost. So for instance, if we get a report at 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, um, we assess whether or not it's Im imminent risk or not. If it is, we will take care of it. If it's not, we will screen it Monday morning just as we normally screen every report the morning of. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, when you say assess, is that the Sheriff's Department? Or that would be us. Okay. There are times when the Sheriff or police come with us. Um, so currently, if we get that report on Friday at 4 o'clock, we will make a determination if it's imminent, if it's not. It will sit there until Monday morning and then the screening team will review it. In the current thought would be that we would have to screen it and, uh, and follow our five or 24 hour or five day response time. So for instance, if it has a physical abuse allegation that is not serious, they would require us to respond within 24 hours, which would mean we'd have to start an assessment on a Saturday afternoon and complete that assessment. 
if law enforcement gets a call from a neighbor um, and you know some say physical abuse or something that isn't imminent and that they don't they could just file a report and give it to us Monday morning we would have to screen it on Saturday afternoon determine whether or not it meets our criteria we may have to go out on Sunday or we could wait for five days let me interrupt you now, Brad. So we would have to. Now that is a, in statute now. It is not. That is not a part of this. That is not a part of the requirements under the new legis legislative. Currently, it is not a requirement. However, there is debate whether or not it's required under current rules. But the prior guidance from the department has been that weekends and holidays do not count in those 24-hour or five-day periods. Can I ask, the other day we, Representative Capricia had talked to some of us about the fact that there are nine, 12, I think nine or 12, 12 things required. that have 12 happened required. and changed, but there's a plethora, there's a bigger list of those. Are you past these ones that are required, or are you kind of talking about all of them? Um, we, I think we're beyond where what has currently passed, okay. and I'm not sure what 12 Representative Capricia is specifically talking about. Um, there's four that have really created, I think, some challenges. Um, the cross-reporting, uh, consulting with the county attorney's office more frequently, um, the other two have slipped my mind. Because there was specific feedback he was looking for regarding the costs associated yeah, with Mr. Those. Chair, so it's I mean, if you guys remember that, yes. Lucretia, he said that either we comply kind of now yeah. under the grants, whatever they were, remember, or he goes, it's going to be mandatory anyway. Is that right. it? Remember something on yeah. that? Well, I, he was just mentioning we didn't take that money and not hire well, them while you yeah, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, so now we're talking about the two social workers. Exactly. And, and he made it very clear that those two new social workers, or however is required, basically were hired, okay, or required, okay, to cut caseloads. Mm -hmm. To basically cut caseloads. Yeah. He indicated to us that there should not be an increase in, in need through the Sheriff's Department or County Attorney's Office. That's he made that very clear to exactly. us. Exactly. That's, what, I was That's what Ron Kresha said. It was not intended to. And, and he said it shouldn't be because they didn't look at that part of it. I mean, as far as funding it. So that's what we got from our... Go ahead. And Mr. Chair, whether I agree with the representative right, or not, right. and quite honestly, I disagree with him. Because any time that you are going to enable, if you will, and in this case, two additional social workers, and I'm not suggesting for a second that they're not needed or wanted, mm -hmm. but any time that you have more information gathering from anyone, and that information ultimately goes to Sergeant Lubert's office, mm -hmm. who ultimately brings it to the county attorney's office, I, I think it's impossible to believe that it doesn't increase workload. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I, don't I, mean, I don't mean to be out of line here, but I, I guess I disagree with the representative. If you're going to continue to build, and it's, if, if it's just going to stop it at social services, having these two people come and gather, whatever the information might be, that's their job is to gather information and stays in social services, he's 100% correct. But that's physically impossible. Well, and one of the recommendations and legislative changes was the requirement that we have to consult more frequently with the county attorney's office so just that implication says that's going to be some more work whether that translated to court activity or attorney time or things like that I mean we already have some structure in place to get input from Amber but I think their expectation is more conversation between our office and the county attorney's office around reports that we screen out cases we want to close families that aren't cooperative, you know, so they've really, they've really said we need to be more in line with the county attorney's office. Um, so fortunately, our county attorney's office's role has been our attorney in these matters and have not taken the role of doing our work. And I know in some counties that's been a concern that county attorneys end up doing the work because they think that we either should get more involved or place more kids or things like that, but it's really been more, the relationship has been more consultative. They've, uh, they've provided legal, legal um, consult, consultation so that we know what, our, what we have in terms of law that we can do. So, and then again, as we send, you know, I think before we send all of our reports to law enforcement, whether you screen them in or screen them out, 
Uh, and again, I think depending on how, law, how much law enforcement wants to be involved, but when they're seeing all the reports, to me that could increase their activity because they may be seeing more, they may be more, may, may be more attentive to what's in those reports. And so, not that I disagree with the representative Cretia, but I just think there will be a fallout across the system from law enforcement to county attorneys to courts. Um, and so, Mr. Chair, if I may ask, yes. if I may ask Brad, I'm, the way